always knew I wanted to go to college. So even when I was in high school, you know, I was trying to take honors classes and doing everything to make sure that I was on that path. That was the only option that I was looking for. Even before I knew I wanted to be a lawyer, I knew I wanted to go to college. My mom always told us that education was the key. Education was our way out. Education opens doors. Um, get your education because no one can ever take that from you. And she always instilled in us that we could be anything that we wanted to be. There never was a question though. I was going to college. I just never had an alternative belief in my mind uh, as a youngster or in high school that my trajectory would take me to college. I didn't know it would end up being ultimately five degrees at the end of the day. Uh, but I knew I'd go to college um, and I knew I needed to get a scholarship. Being successful in college is more more often than not, not about the academics, it's learning how to do college. You know, my mom and dad divorced early uh, when I was 10. She, she told me, you're the man of the house and I need your help. But she said, in addition to all of the jobs that you're going to have as quote unquote man of the house, you have a main job. And that main job is to study. Keep your head in the books. That was a quote that she would use that I still use with my own sons. We have to ensure that our children know that they can aspire and become whatever it is they want to be. And right. that's what I'm most passionate about. Every child getting the chance to do their best. Whether you're GT, whether you're special ed, whether you're ELL, whether you're poor, whether you're homeless, whatever the case may be, everyone has unique needs and so on, but we want to create the best environment that we can for every child. She got me into a program called Project Upward Bound. It was a program for uh, people uh, who, who either uh, didn't have necessarily the financial wherewithal to be able to go to college or who's, who, who were first-generation college students. Uh, and that program saved my life, quite literally. Instead of me hanging out in the streets on Saturdays uh, with my friends, I was at Southern Methodist University studying uh, for four hours uh, in the morning. You got to be able to know how to align yourself with people that can help you. One of the most important things in the world that we can that we can do is get somebody who they just want you to do well. They walk that path already. They want you to do well. They want you to go beyond them and don't make the mistake of thinking that you already have it all together. You know it all, but you don't need it because that's just not true. There was Dave Croston. There was Sam Smith, there was Jerry Harper, all of them have since passed. Um, and they were all instrumental in inspiring me and pushing me to become the first black female firefighter. There are some systemic issues uh, that help uh, to perpetuate these types of problems. Being resilient in the face of all of the challenges and difficulties you're gonna have is an important component of uh, and, and, um, a trait and characteristic to have. Excuses are unacceptable. Excuses are, are tools of the incompetent, monuments of nothingness, and those who settle for them and specialize in them are seldom good at anything else. And so to sit around and cry about your circumstances and cry about, oh, well, because of racism and classism and sexism and, um, and all of these other isms, those are things that will hold you back. Do they exist today, uh, Treasurer? Yes, they do. But it's important that you continue to move forward, that you don't continue to allow excuses to hold you back from striving for that goal. It's frustrating. All folks want to do is be treated the way they want to be treated. And that's with respect and giving a fair opportunity. If I come to the table, Treasurer Conine, and I have the experience, I have the education, I come offering what the description calls for. Don't judge me because I'm a person of color. Mm -hmm. Don't judge her because she's a woman. People deserve a chance. Here we are in the year 2021, mm -hmm. in the 21st century. Why are we still talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion? Why? Because when you know better, you should do better. But there are women out there, women out there still fighting for equal pay and equal rights. There are people of color out there still being discriminated on and still being denied opportunities, still going through racial inequities, if you will. It's absolutely ridiculous. Because we don't have a lot of representation, people want to make sure that your voice is heard and you feel more comfortable with someone that has some shared lived experiences. Sometimes that you have some shared lived experiences so you can relate to where I'm coming from. 
you, you, you know, you, you understand. I know this is important to you because I know we have some shared lived experiences. Every year during Black History Month, um, high schools, they crown a Black History King and a Black History Queen. And you're voted on by your peers. And at Valley High School, my senior year, 1990, I was crowned Black History Queen. I was at an event with um, the only African-American female from the Las Vegas Justice Court, Karen Bennett Herring. This young, young high school student, she came up to me and Judge Bennett and she told us, she was about 14 at the time, that she just wanted to take a picture with us. Because seeing the two of us, she knew that that could one day be her. That moment like changed it for me and made it real as to what this meant and how important it was for me to be that person to show like young girls that look like me that you too can be exactly who I am. Education is so vitally important in this in this country if you're going to be competitive. Education changed my life. 